Hey Kaiju fans, it's Titan Alante, and today we're talking about the Heisei incarnation of the King of the Monsters, Godzilla. Radiated Godzilla source, the Heisei Godzilla, also known as the third generation Godzilla, starts out being 80 meters tall in his debut film, The Return of Godzilla, through Godzilla vs. Biollante. After being incapacitated by the anti-nuclear energy bacteria, the Heisei Godzilla goes into hibernation for a period of two years, after which he feeds on a nuclear submarine, revitalizing him and causing him to grow in size to 100 meters. In this empowered state, the Heisei Godzilla is known as powered up third generation Godzilla, or alternatively, fourth generation Godzilla. In Godzilla vs. Destoroyah, as a result of the explosion of Birth Island, Godzilla absorbs a large amount of radiation, turning the monster into Burning Godzilla. This iteration of the Monster King was portrayed by original Hedora and Gaigan suit actor Ken Pachiro Satsuma throughout all seven Heisei films, while Wataru Fukuda played the Godzilla Saurus. The Heisei King of the Monsters does not retain the heroic personality of the second Showa Godzilla, instead returning to the villainous persona of the original. However, while the original Godzilla appeared actively vengeful towards humanity, the Heiseiji is initially portrayed as a sympathetic and tragic being who is simply lost in human civilization and trying to survive, causing destruction as a consequence. Progressively, he began actively causing destruction and was portrayed as the primary villain in a couple of movies. In Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, the Big G began transitioning into an anti-hero character and raised an infant member of his species as his son. In the last two films of the Heisei series, Godzilla battled against monsters more malevolent than himself, while the character Miki Saigusa insisted that Godzilla was an intelligent being with human-like sentiments. Shown in Godzilla vs. Destoroyah, where he displays visible grief and anger when his adopted son is killed by Destoroyah. The Heisei Godzilla's look is mostly consistent throughout his film appearances, with details like dorsal plate shape, neck length, and eye color being the biggest differences although his initial design in The Return of Godzilla looks substantially different from subsequent suits. The nicknames for the Heisei Godzilla suits are 84 Goji, Bayer Goji and Gido Goji, Bato Goji, Rado Goji, and lastly, Moge Goji and Desu Goji. In Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, it's revealed that the Heisei Godzilla is actually a mutated Godzilla Saurus. The character Kenichiro Terasawa hypothesized that a Godzilla source living on Lagos Island and the Marshall Islands was exposed to the Castle Bravo hydrogen bomb test conducted at nearby Bikini Atoll in 1954 and transformed into Godzilla. The Futurians, a group of time travelers from the year 2204, used this hypothesis to travel back to Lagos Island in 1944 and move the Godzilla source off the island to the Bering Sea, where they presumed it would die far from nuclear testing. However, the Futurians were responsible for creating this Godzilla in the first place, as a nuclear submarine crashed in the dinosaur's vicinity in the 1970s, transforming it into the same Heisei Godzilla. Meaning, the Heisei Goji is not the 1954 Goji, and neither Godzilla was erased from history. Check out this video for a more in-depth explanation. This video would literally be over 30 minutes long if the Heisei Godzilla's history was included, so it isn't. It's in its own separate video, which you can choose to watch right here. On to the abilities. Atomic Breath The Heisei Monster King's distinctive weapon is a focused 500,000 degree Celsius beam of radiation released from his mouth capable of causing large explosions and severely wounding monsters at point-blank range. Despite its power, some of the Big G's enemies have proven resistant to the standard atomic breath. Spiral Heat Ray A stronger variation of the standard atomic breath, this was an attack wrapped in an electrical spiral. Godzilla first used this beam to decapitate King Ghidorah's middle head after his regular atomic breath was shown having little effect on King Ghidorah. This first iteration of the spiral breath is still blue in color, but is surrounded by a purplish spiral of energy and before Godzilla fires it, his dorsal plates are surrounded in blue electricity. As a result of Godzilla absorbing Fire Rodan's energy in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, the color of this beam was changed to red, and it was so powerful that a few blasts of it were enough to destroy Super Mechagodzilla and Space Godzilla, though Destoroyah was able to withstand several hits. The Big G fires a different red spiral ray in each film. First, the Uranium Atomic Heat Ray, peaking at 1.2 million degrees Celsius, 
than the burn spiral heat rate or nuclear fusion heat rate at around 900,000 degrees Celsius and burning Godzilla's two different beams, the burning heat ray and the infinite heat ray. The infinite heat ray was utilized against Tsuruya once burning Godzilla began to enter meltdown and is said to increase immeasurably in power each time Godzilla uses it. Nuclear Pulse the King of the Monsters can emit atomic energy in all directions from every inch of his body in a short-range pulse. First seen in his fight against Biollante, where he used it to break free from Biollante's tendrils, he also utilized his attack against King Ghidorah when the latter was attempting to strangle Godzilla with his necks. During his battle with Mothra, the Big G used a nuclear pulse to break free from the 3D mirror Mothra created with her scales. After being struck with Mechagodzilla's shock anchor harpoons, Goji discharged a form of energy up the cables, severely damaging the mech. Fighting Space Godzilla, Godzilla discharged energy through his physical blows, which overloaded the space monster with energy. After absorbing Fire Rodan's life force, Godzilla demonstrated the ability to give off huge amounts of radiation and heat so intense that it caused Super Mecha Godzilla's synthetic diamond armor to literally melt, allowing the mech to be easily destroyed by Godzilla's spiral ray. In GV Destoroya, when Godzilla's body temperature begins to approach critical levels due to his meltdown, he constantly emits more powerful, orange-colored nuclear pulses which, while ineffective against the Super X-3, did stun Destoroya a few times and caused the area surrounding Godzilla to erupt in flames. In this case, the nuclear pulses appear to be uncontrollable and are a symptom of Godzilla's meltdown. Durability the Heisei Godzilla is extremely durable and resistant to conventional human weaponry, and his cells, G-cells, are a sought-after scientific commodity. In addition to being used to genetically engineer plants to be resistant to drought, G-cells give rise to the mutant creature Biolante, who retains the Big G's durability and healing factor, and who also is said to be incapable of dying. In GV King Ghidorah, the radiation dose absorbed from a nuclear submarine allowed Godzilla to purge the anti-nuclear energy bacteria from his body and after Fire Rodan imparted his energy into Godzilla, he was able to rapidly reform his destroyed second brain. Burning Godzilla had absorbed enough radiation from the Birth Island explosion that his power and regeneration were enhanced, shown when Destoroya's horn katana left only external injuries despite slicing straight through his body. Godzilla also survived spending five years inside Mount Mihara, and falling into a volcanic fault and swimming through miles of molten, 1500-degree magma in GV Mothra. Physical Strength The Heisei Godzilla prefers to battle his opponents from a distance using his atomic breath rather than up close. When forced to battle an opponent up close, the Monster King still displayed vicious strength, shown when he lifted King Ghidorah by his tails and slammed it onto the ground repeatedly, and when he nearly strangled Rodan up close when the latter attempted to attack Godzilla while he was on the ground. He was also able to almost effortlessly lift Mechagodzilla by its head and throw it, despite its incredible mass. Amphibiousness Godzilla has an amphibious lifestyle, and is as adept a fighter underwater as he is on land. He engages opponents in the sea on multiple occasions, fighting Batra, Biollante, and Mothra either beneath or on the surface of the waves. Also, being submerged does not impede his atomic ray. Intelligence This Godzilla often reacts on animal cunning shown through his conditioned response to the Super X's flares and Dr. Hayashida's magnetic wave transmitter, and through instinct, as he was said to use magnetic patterns in the atmosphere to navigate, like birds. He was still capable of independent thought, however, and according to Miki Saigusa, of human-like sentiments as well, corroborated by his mourning the death of Godzilla Jr. In GB Space Godzilla, during the final battle, Godzilla was the first to figure out that Space Godzilla was drawing energy from the Fukuoka Tower and demolished the tower with the help of Lan Mogara. The Heisei Godzilla had some manner of psychic link with Godzilla Jr. He was also able to shrug off Miki Saigusa's attempts at psychic influence during a face-to-face -face encounter in GV Biollante, and even when she was aided by the technology of Project T in Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Energy Absorption and Projection Because Godzilla's heart is a biological nuclear reactor, he relies on nuclear power to sustain his metabolism, and derives his sustenance from absorbing energy from active man-made nuclear reactors. In one case, the energy absorbed from a nuclear sub was enough to allow Godzilla's immune system to purge the Ana from his body and cause him to grow 20 meters in height. When Birth Island exploded, Godzilla absorbed a tremendous influx of radiation which made him substantially more powerful, though it eventually led to his meltdown. According to Kenichi Yamane, 
Godzilla's heart contained enough nuclear power to create, quote, a burst of energy unseen since time began that would cause the Earth's atmosphere to ignite if it exploded. If Godzilla's meltdown was not kept under control by G-Force's freezer weapons, his heart would have melted down into the Earth's core and caused the planet to implode. Godzilla is also able to weaponize his own nuclear power in the form of his atomic breath or nuclear pulse, and constantly emits lethal amounts of radiation. In Godzilla vs. Asteroia, Godzilla attempts to revive his son by breathing energy into him, which manages to briefly stir Junior to life. When Godzilla melts down, he imparts his energy into Junior's corpse, reviving and mutating him into a fully grown Godzilla. Weaknesses The Monster King is shown to have a critical weakness to cadmium, an element commonly used to slow nuclear reactions. The Super X fired its full payload of cadmium missiles into the monster's mouth, temporarily stopping his heart and knocking him unconscious. It was also utilized by the Super X-3 to freeze burning Godzilla. In GVMG2, the Big G is revealed to have a second brain in his spine, and Super Mecha Godzilla paralyzed him from the waist down by destroying it. It was also suggested in GV Space Godzilla that Godzilla has a soft spot under each armpit, but this alleged weak point was never successfully exploited. The only other human-made weapon shown to be effective against Godzilla was Dr. Shiragami's anti-nuclear energy bacteria, Aneb, bacteria genetically engineered from G-cells designed to consume radioactivity. The Aneb managed to lower the radioactivity within Godzilla's body enough to force him into hibernation for two years. Godzilla also went through meltdown after the monster's internal reactor was unable to cope with the huge influx of radiation he absorbed from the Birth Island explosion. According to concept artist Shinji Nishikawa, Godzilla was originally written to be a Tyrannosaurus Rex prior to being mutated. Nishikawa, however, said he couldn't accept the idea that Godzilla was mutated from a Tyrannosaurus, so he came up with the idea for the Godzillasaurus and submitted concept art of it to Toho, ultimately leading to its inclusion in Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. It's common knowledge that a 4.8 meter tall Cybot Godzilla was constructed for the return of Godzilla. However, fewer people know that there were two different 84 Goji suits that were extremely similar in appearance. Similarly, Godzilla vs. Biollante had three suits. The second used for land scenes and the third for water scenes, while the first one made, called the No Good Suit, was deemed unacceptable and appeared only in publicity photos and for the scene when Godzilla approached the Twin 21 Towers, plus a mechanical upper half for Godzilla. For Godzilla vs King Ghidorah, the land suit, renamed Gidogoji, Shinjuku Battle, was given a new head and used to fight Mecha King Ghidorah and later in specific shots when it was cut in half. The 1989 sea suit was modified, renamed Gidogoji, Hokkaido Battle, and used for the majority of Godzilla vs King Ghidorah. And that's only scratching the surface of all the little tidbits regarding the Heisei suits. The Hokkaido battle suit has the distinction of being the only Godzilla suit to be stolen, news that made its way around the world. Well, Tri-State citizens, beware. Godzilla is on the loose. Unbelievably, someone has stolen the rubber Godzilla model from a Japanese special effects department in Tokyo. The model was made for a new Godzilla movie coming out in Japan. Now, the theft won't affect the film's premiere. I'm sure you're glad to hear that. I know. Jerry's relieved. But the 13-foot high-tech model is worth 39000 bucks, and the Japanese who have a real yen for their favorite movie star, they want him back. Has anyone checked with King Kong? The suit disappeared before Godzilla vs. Mothra began shooting, and was to have been used in several scenes too strenuous for the new Batogoji suit. Thankfully, it was eventually retrieved and used in the final movie. That's all we have for the Heisei Godzilla. If you haven't watched the history video yet, do so now if you'd like. See ya!